Okay, welcome to the start of a new anime review series. This is my series of Omamori Him. Yep, this particular series aired 10 years ago. Yep, aired pretty much this series lasted for 12 episodes. This one discussed in the first four, which I had to do a little review and give me information for it. Yeah, the first five episodes, well, about, yeah, first five, because, well, five is kind of the aftermath of what happened in episode four. These episodes cover the chapter of the manga. Cover the first eight chapters and ten to fourteen, plus what looks like most of chapter fifteen, pages like four through ten, and nineteen. But mostly put, it's mostly the same with some alterations. The series starts off with the main character, his name is Yuko. He is basically, actually, no, it doesn't start with him. It starts with Rico, his childhood friend. Which, from look of her, she's probably about, thir uh, probably about 14, uh, I'd say about early, I'd say about middle schoolish, And she goes to wake up Yuko, who is basically, apparently she's been taking care of him. Like, it's been revealed, like, in this episode, that she's been taking care of him since... Well, since his parents died. Oh yeah, he says this is actually his 16th birthday. Yep, he is 16 years old, which means he's like 15. Oh yeah, and there's a recurring joke in this series about breast sizes. And this series has got lots of fan service. They do make some changes from the manga, yes, but they say mostly faithful from what I can tell. They walk, they go walk into school, right after he gets his breakfast... They don't really show it, but they go walk off. And then they run into a woman with big breasts. A woman named Himari. Himari. And she is... Reveals herself to be Yuto's bodyguard. Yep. Also reveals he's one of the one of the 12 Demon Slayer families. The Akira. Now, I should point out, though, before I continue. I've been watching this series subbed. Because this is another one of those series where there is no official dub for it. But here's something interesting, though. It is available on the Federation website. Oh, yes. It is available on the Federation website. But Federation never dubbed this series for some reason. I have no idea why. So, basically, he's there. Like, they go off to school together. And, of course, he, of course, runs. You see, it's Ventenzo. Yes, his name. This guy's name Tenzo. Now, it's implied Yuko might be a pervert, but no, Tenzo was the full-on pervert. <sighs> yep. And at one point in the episode, he gets possessed by a spider. Yes, a spider. Well, a spider demon. They don't really show it until, well, Henry basically exercises him and then kills the demon. would be a... Basically stabbing on top, on top of a water tower on top of high school because of course it's a Japanese anime. You can't have you can't have a Japanese anime that features a high school without having scenes on the rooftop. Yeah, that is from what this is from what I can tell. This is an essential when it comes to a Japanese anime. We always have to have scenes of characters having conversations on or at least sometimes battles on the rooftop of a high school. Every single anime that I have watched that's featured in an actual high school has actually had this. As far as I know, no series has ever had this. If you look at something like, oh, I don't know, it's like American Cartoons, which features characters in high school, or at least in live action, is there any point where these characters go to the roof to have a conversation? No, not really. None of them do. Well, mainly because a lot of high schools are not as tall as the ones that are in frickin' Japan, which are like mini skyscrapers. This is one I can tell. They look like about three or four stories. And like, and this is, this is probably the Japanese style, of basically, of high schools, where the classrooms are kind of like inside indoor hallway. The hallway is basically kind of indoors and stuff outdoors like they are here in the U.S. I'm not sure. I've only seen the ones at Zephyrus, at Zephyrus High School where I live. And... They have windows, and they don't. And of course, these windows can be opened, or they can be broken. 
like in the case of Bleach, where Ichigo's head was shoved right through a freaking window, and he doesn't freaking bleed. Yep. And at the end of the episode, we get the debut of Seneco, the water, the basically a water demon. Yes. Who wears this very skimpy, like, nightgown night outfit with a pair of panties. Yeah, that's her attire, and she wears this. Well, after her first couple appearances, she stops wearing it in the anime. In the manga, she still wears it, though at least the anime actually sees decency to change her outfit instead of having the same exact outfit. So, very next episode, we have the characters go to the beach. And from what I saw in the manga, it's pretty much most of the exactly the same. Though at least the characters go go shopping for some suits. And, of course, well, Rinko buys a very decent swimsuit. We don't see a swimsuit a little bit later. In the case of Himuro, Him Himuri, she buys a swimsuit. And it's a nice looking swimsuit. Fits it perfectly. Also, like, in case you wonder, like, okay, if Yuko, if Yuko's parents are dead, and it's also stated that his grandparents are dead, too, like, where does money come from? Like, how is he basically afforded to live? I mean, he's 16 years old. How is he afforded to live by himself? My personal guess is his family m must have been very wealthy, despite the fact he's living some of a noble life. He probably has a massive inheritance, or at least enough expenses to live by himself, because here's the thing. In the U.S., if you're 16 years old, you cannot live by yourself unless you have some certain permissions. you got to have at least some adult live with you. A 16-year-old in the U.S. cannot live by himself. That is how legally, that is how the legal system works here. No, I do not have experience with this at all. It's just what I've heard. Yep. So. Yeah. Oh, in case you're wondering who does the cooking, probably Rinko probably does. And it's also implied she lives like kind of like next door. She doesn't live with him like Emery does. Oh yeah, she ends up basically sleeping in his bed. And it's a recurring gag. It basically started with the pilot episode after she was living with him. That he wakes up, what's Ringo do? Beat up both of them for being in bed together. No, these two do not have sex. Though, when I get to the final episode, I will discuss what happened at the end of the manga. Which, I think our guys were all thinking, Damn, Yuku was one lucky son of a gun to be with this many women. To have this massive... What I'm, I'm going to describe that in the final... When I talk about the final chapter in episode... When I, when I discuss the final few episodes of the series. So... Oh yeah, it's also a funny thing like the house are shaking because Ringo gets upset because she's jealous. Yeah, she's jealous. It's been it's very heavily implied she's got a thing for him, but she doesn't really do anything with it. Not like a thing of no. So they go to the beach and like everything's going fine until well now apparently here's the thing, Himory, because she's a cat, she cannot swim. So Rinko, basically, be very nice to her, give her a floaty. How nice of her. It's basically a web with handles on it. She's not going too far, lucky enough that Yuko is a very sensible guy, goes out and helps her. Also, I should point out, though, she, she always refers to him as Young Lord. Never referred to him by an actual name. Nope, never does, because she's basically his bodyguard. Everyone else does. And then she and... Yuko get pulled down by frickin' tentacles. No, these two do not get raped by tentacles. It's that's was a it's a minor standard in anime. When tentacles show up, there's a rape scene happening. Here, nope, don't worry about it. it there's no rape. Nobody's clothes are getting ripped off, and nobody is getting raped. They're just brought before Shuko, which they of course they actually fight. Of course, well, Henry doesn't have her. Her sword with her, she's basically just a swimsuit. And, like, she only drowns, but Yuko basically saves her. Like if he takes one of her little spikes, icicles that she makes, stabs her leg, and basically throws out the water of her, her monster she has. And, well, she just basically, how should I put this? Her blood gets mixed in, throws it in the water, and... She kind of explains to her that Yuko only wants, like, 
doesn't want exactly violence, so she leaves. Like, I'll leave for today. Now, I think that what I can tell, they actually sort of adapted the chapter. They skipped off, the page they skipped off for page for chapter 15, probably for the very next episode, because, well, it kind of confirms stuff. So, you have Yuko taking a bath, and all of a sudden you see some of the water, and then he pulls it up, and it's Shuko! Yep! Also, he has her hands on her breast. Because, of course, he does. Yep. <laughs> so, basically, both Rinko and Himri come in. They start attacking. Of course, they want a former truce. And they do. They basically, she agrees to stay with him. And she even puts on proper clothing. Yeah, she stops wearing the skimpy outfit she was wearing. And she sort of becomes Yuko's maid. Yeah, she becomes his maid. She cooks some dinner, cleans his house. How nice of her. And we all see this episode, we see the debut of the character Liz. A big-breasted maid, a woman, who basically runs a maid cafe. Now, as far as I can tell, now this is not the first series I've seen maid cafes in. I've also seen it's not only in this series, but also Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. There's also My Bride is, is a Mermaid. That was another series that had one of these. And I think that was it. This is probably by far the fourth anime I've seen that I can think of that actually had a maid cafe. That I could think of. Well, well you probably think, wait, hey, what about Isekai Court? What, what about the shorts of ReZero? I'm talking about actually in the main story. What happened in ReZero, that was in bonus material. That was non-canon. This is canon material. Oh yeah, and it turns out that this woman is not human. Point out by Henry by sniffing her. And kind of turns out she really isn't. They think she's a demon. Nope, she's not. Of course, Sorike thinks she's from a she thinks she's a Western demon. Nope, she's not a demon at all. She is a Taksuri, I think it is. It's some kind of Japanese mythology monster involving objects. Apparently her actual body is a teacup. Yep, a teacup. And they point this out by having her get stabbed. And it turns out, well, all they did was simply stab her outfit. They really nothing with her. And at one point, that they actually you know, they try... Now, here's the thing. Before they do this, basically, she thinks that because... She thinks that he's out to get her. He really isn't. He probably has no idea what the heck is going on. So, basically, she puts like a drink... Uh, basically, a sedative in his drink. Basically, tell him to leave the restaurant. And... Tenzo decided to leave. Of course, he gets used to Cisco for the first time in this episode. This happens in episode 3. So, and apparently the whole cafe gets pretty much emptied out. They have a brief battle. And lucky enough that Yuko basically saves her, her teacup, allowing her to live and basically do whatever she wants. She's not in the very next episode. She actually comes back for the following episode. Also, they do make a slight change here. Because of the fact that Simmerco was is living with Yuko now, Henry decides to go um basically like a slice and dice slice of trees and runs to the teacher. This is a slight now they do a slight wardrobe change. In the anime, she's actually more covered up. In the in the manga, she is show off some cleavage. And she's the one getting her, her job at the maid cafe. In the in the manga, they actually it's sort of a slight change because in the manga, the teacher brings Yuko and his friends, his group, to the cafe. While in the manga, it's just basically hammering. And, yeah. Aside from that, aside from that one basically big change, yeah, the teacher doesn't really do very much. Also, the teacher has got, well, big breasts. Of course she does. Yeah, she pops up. She mainly just there, just do the classroom stuff. What this is just very rarely she does. Episode four is simply put this: Yuko wants to do some training, so they go to his home, his grandparents' home, and so Henry brings Yuko, Rinko, and Senko. Now, now Rinko, I kind of get because she's close to him. Fine. So, Seneco, I think the reason why, because I don't think she can stand live her house by herself. And probably because they don't fully trust us. By the fact, they're a truce. They probably don't want to do anything with it. So, they get there and meet Kaya. The, the, now, they introduce her at the end of episode 3. Now, the way they introduce some of these characters, they introduce them at the end of a previous episode. Seneco, 
Punku was introduced in the end of episode 1. In the case of Liz, she was introduced at the end of episode 2. And Kaya was introduced at the end of episode 3. Which is a great thing they do this. And 4, you're probably thinking, okay, did they introduce any new character in this one? No, not really, because 4 was a basically part one of a kind of a two-parter. Where they go there, and mostly put this particular episode, is Yuko getting back his memories. Not doing any training, per se, basically doing a backstory. Like I'm saying, so basically is interested in the, in the library, basically the records. It's kind of like she's kind of like the character Lynn from the series In a World with my smartphone. I mean, you if, if you watch the anime and compare it to the sub, you could probably thinking, wow, this woman basically be absolutely perfect to dub this character. What about Yuko? I could possibly see Hepicorn doing it. Yes. What about Henry? Well, based upon her stern attitude, probably you, the the one who voices you, I could probably see him voicing her. Uh, Rinko. Well, Serko, I could possibly see. Well, that one, let's see. In the case of Yuko, uh, of Rinko, Karma Lee, possibly. That's the one I can think of. Her or Lucy Christian. Probably Karma Lee, but it's something of the series was never dubbed. I mean, Funimation has the right to have the series in the streaming service, but for some reason, no dub. I don't know why. It's weird. So, a little bit of research, and then they come across two more demons. Yep. They use these demons in this episode. And... Kaya Gore doesn't like Yuko because he's stealing away Henry. It's implied she may have a thing for her, or she just just don't want anybody around her. And she takes care of the house. And we see... What well, looks like Yuko's grandfather's ashes, and basically is being played praying to them. Like this is, from what I can tell, this is basically Japanese culture. I have nothing against it at all. It's perfectly fine. It's not something that U.S. citizens would do. I mean, if you want to basically talk to somebody like this, you can just do it at a gravesite. Don't have to be like these ashes. Now, this is this is probably just how Japanese people in Japanese culture probably deal with this. So like this, they'll have ashes, like little flames on Three little flames. Yeah, that's probably how they do things over there. I'm not going to criticize them for it because it's their culture. I'm not in the business of insulting people's culture. Okay? So, of course, him repeats all some embarrassing stuff. And then, of course, now there is a slight change here. Because, well, they have sort of a flashback sequence. And they have this, well... He also basic she gets on top of him while he's basically just relaxing with a fan. And they have this thing where despite the fact he kind of starts remembering what happened in his past, then she gets sweaty and is like, go take a bath in the nearby lake. Now, this particular sequence is complete anime original from what I can tell. I don't think this happened in manga. Because the way it happened in the manga, as soon as the memory ends, Yuko is in Himari's arms. In the anime, basically, he kind of peeps out by accident. But lucky enough, he kind of bas she basically puts on a rope. Well, yeah, not exactly put on a rope. Basically, she gets. And of course, well, then we cut. Then we have Agatha, one of the demons, basically, just interrupt them. And it's like, oh, you're butt naked. <laughs> yep. And then, of course, they. Of course, he briefly goes and puts her clothes back on, and then slices her clothes. And wording change here because in the manga she says, "Young master, I don't see your breast." In the anime, she says, "Don't need to see another woman's bosom." It's an okay change. I don't think that well anybody's gonna complain about changing the word of seeing another woman's breast to another woman's bosom. It's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that at all. And now, there is another change here from the manga with this scene. Like, first he gets away because he wants, she wants to protect him. He comes back, and then he gets sliced in the chest. In the manga, he got stabbed in the back. And then she goes freaking nuts. Starts attacking her, and then, of course, they're trying to stop her. He brings out her sheath. Basically, she touches it, and basically... Big explosion! And by the way, this explosion did not happen in the manga at all. They 
this is completely an original. It's the passing of light thing. It's it's filler stuff. And that's episode four ended. Now there is a big change at the start of chap of episode five. You see, in the anime, the way this opens, like okay, we have Suku gets to the, to the battle site at the battling uh, Agatha's like twin counterpart and capturing her. In the manga, they actually showing her taking off her top, being her panties, and basically stealing her wound. And the anime, basically, you see her, oh, she's already in her panties, and she's using her water to seal up his wound. And, basically, Himari's like, what are you doing that for? He's like, you jealous? <laughs> yeah, of course, she proceeds to cover her chest up, and I should point out, though, in the manga, it's a completely different attire. Because it's basically the white, almost like the white see-through outfit she wore when she, when she started in the series. In the anime, it's a completely different look. And then, of course, we have the bath later, and remembering stuff, and there was a mention about the fact there was no demon side looking for him. So they go back, and then we have the battle sequence. Now, the train sequence, it's a little bit different presented how in the anime, it's like, we have him on top of his roof, basically eating noodles, and then we have Yuko and Senko just training in the park to lock his passing of light thing. And it's like, okay, we need to basically do this a little more. Let's use some seduction. So bring Rinko and Liz back. Yep, and in case you're wondering, yeah, this is for the manga as well, so no change here. Yeah, and, and of course Liz locks up in the air, and of course he lands down. The first thing he sees when he turns, he sees Liz's panties. And then she proceeds to basically bury his face in her chest. And then Senko like gets right on top, like gets on the back of him, and Rinko basically tries to do the whole thing of like take off her top and try to be the first person to kiss, to kiss Yuko. Him where he shows up, gets mad, and she scares everybody off. And then like they kind of change it a little bit after this, where like they're like she's perfectly fine, and of course <laughs> Tara, well basically having well. Kind of burying his face in her chest, in Henry's chest. And the very next episode, it's it, and then they cut to like, oh, like a few days later. Don't mention, no mention of Demon Slayer or the village, basically where he came from. Most of the thing is is like they, it's like they for chapter fifteen, they cut out the first three pages, they probably put it in, in episode three, and they cut out like one minor thing. We have basically Henry and. In the manga, Himari and Yuka look like they made out, but they cut that scene from the manga anime for some reason. I don't know why. And they just go walking about, like with a fish. And that's when the new character shows up. Kunu. Yes. And she briefly by Timuri. And then she introduces herself, and that's how the episode ends. And don't worry, this character basically is a canon character, so don't worry about that. Yep, that's pretty much all I could think of to happen these these five episodes. In the case of what's going to happen with the next one, it's probably going to be... Probably going to be going... I don't think it was up at episode eight. I mean, I have, because I finished episode five, I have roughly seven episodes left. I'm not going to have the next video cover seven episodes. I'm just probably going to do four episodes, and that's probably going to be... Yeah, I'm probably going to go from episodes six through nine, and then I'm just going to, like do the next part, part two, and then have, like, part three be, like, last three episodes of the series. Yep. So, yeah, that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned for part two if I get a chance to do it today. If not, worry about it tomorrow, okay? Do this next video. Bye.